Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to our webinar presentation with John Carter, where he's going to talk with you about how you can discover the quick hits lifestyle using his new tools for consistent daily income. Tonight, you'll get to hear how he just generated over a million dollars in one day with two quick hits trades. Some quick housekeeping to go over, you may see some interactive features like polls and offers popping up during the webinar. Also on the right hand side, you'll see a live Q&A tab where you can ask questions that will go to our moderator team as well as John at the end of the presentation. If you'd like to maximize your screen real estate, you can minimize the chat section via the down arrow just above the chat, and you can also maximize the video by hovering over the video and clicking enter full screen. And now it's time to get started. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you John Carter. All right, most awesome. Uh, let me get this thing shared here and we will get going. All right, so uh, welcome everybody. Happy Thursday. I can't believe it is December of 2022 and we are getting close to 2023. This year has gone by pretty quickly. So excited to, uh, for some of you for some of you that have already seen kind of what I've talked about tonight, I've went ahead and added some updated examples. For those of you that have no idea what I'm talking about, uh, tonight, you're in for a treat. Uh, just kind of a way to, you know, not only navigate uh, the current markets. Yeah, an audio should be good. I think we got this sucker nailed. So for those of you that had to experience that last time. Um, so the idea with this, and as always, the markets are changing, right? And the, the bottom that we saw, that hard, you know, sell-off that we saw in March of 2020, and then the bottom, and then the rally that subsequently lasted for 17 months, um, a lot of people that got into the markets then really just didn't experience reality. You know, that was just, you know, buy, hold for three weeks, you know, cash it out and rinse and repeat. And uh, what a lot of traders are learning this year is that assets can also go down. And the Fed's doing a really good job of ensuring, you know, crypto has lost 80% of its value. Tech stocks have lost 50% of their value. Some of them 80% of their value. Housing is starting to roll over down 15%. Um, you know, the list goes on and on and on. And this is exactly once what the Fed wants to do. I mean, asset prices were getting out of hand. So we're no longer in an environment where things just kind of go up. But as traders, we've got to adapt and we want to be able to make a living no matter what is going on. And so that's what that's what tonight is about. So um, let's let's dive into this. So, you know, the one thing here and I, and I see this a lot, especially with newer traders, uh, you know, crypto, you name it. It's just kind of like, you know, you know, where are the steady uptrends? I thought everything was supposed to go up forever. And, you know, I love this because it just says, you know, your problem is you're crazy. And of course, here's a bull, right? A bull market. And we had a bull market in all, literally every asset on planet Earth. Uh, and that has come to an end. So, and and frankly, it needs to, because if things go up forever, um, the 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 exponential increase in stupidity is is really hard to to comprehend. But that's when you see things like, you know, uh, you know, I mean, FTX, the whole crypto disaster there in 2000, you know, pets.com was kind of the poster child of that. And that 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 excess leads to bad things. I, I think it's good to wash that out and start again. So the idea then is, is what kind of market do we have now? If we don't have a market uh, that's going to go up forever, and frankly, we're probably going to be in a, in a trading range for a while. How do we trade that? How do we trade that in a way that's really not stressful? and that meets our uh, financial goals. Because in trading, we gotta be clear that it's one of those things where if we do, do we wanna be right or do we wanna make money? And a lot of people go down in flames trying to be right. And that's just a natural human condition. But if we wanna make money, we can sit back and look at this objectively and say, all right, what can we do? What can we adapt? What is this market doing that, that warrants a new approach? So the first thing you may notice is that now, this happens to be the S&P 500, SPX. Um, this is also like many stocks out there. But the SPX in particular is spending a lot of time, and this is from today. It's just spending a lot of time in between what I call key quarter point levels. And this is something that's important to remember. Because the volume, even though there's strikes every five points, the volume uh, in the S&Ps is at the quarter point levels, 3950, 3975, you know, hedge funds, if they're, they're trying to buy protection, they're not doing 3955s, they're going to 3950. Um, so because they do that, that's where the volume is. And because that's where the volume is, 
that's where the action is. And so you'll notice on a day like today, and I, and I, frankly, I thought that after this initial push that we were going to actually push through this and, and possibly go to 4,000 and we did not. Um, here we stepped in and we, you know, we kind of came back down. We, we hovered around, we, we raced back up and we came down hard. And then towards the end of the day, we just kind of, you know, farted around there. Well, there's a reason for this and it's important to understand what exactly that reason is. And we're going to get to this in a few moments. This has zero to do with the retail public buying and selling stocks, trading GameStop, trading AMC. Okay. This is all different stuff. And we just want to know what that is. And so what is causing this is the incredible explosion in trading of SPX options. And by SPX, I also mean SPY. And in addition to ES options, because what's happened in the biggest change between a couple of years ago and today is you have zero DTE. Okay. And that's zero days to expiration. And as you guys, a lot of you already know, we've got five days a week. Um, it used to be, um, you know, obviously every Friday. And then at some point it switched to three days a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. And then not too long ago, it switched to five days a week. Every day we've got expiration. Now we've got SPY every day expiration and of course Q's and um, I believe NDX as well. They were Monday, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. We have ES options every day. Okay, so why, why is this important? So first of all, notice that equity options, the volume over the last three years on average is about the same. So, you know, 1.6 million average contracts and you can see here that uh, calls and puts, the ratio there, it's, it's honestly almost the same now with a little bump you know, maybe, you know, a couple percent, about 5% higher. So equity options are about the same. VIX options has exploded the most from a percentage basis. Um, but what I'm most interested in is in SPX options. And in fact, so this is from September, 2022. Now it's December, 2022. And now this number is more like 3 million. Okay. So here's the kicker with this. So you've got another almost 2 million contracts traded every day in the SPX. Okay versus um, three years ago. So why is that important? There's two main reasons. The first reason is that, uh, and, and, and by the way, in addition to this, okay, this is not like monthly options. This is not options that are 60 days out. You know, all the action is today. So of the 3 million contracts, you know, that tr are trading every day, um, over the, you know, the millions and millions of contracts that are trading, uh, the amount the amount of options that are expiring five days or less across the board represents 58% of total volume. So all this activity is short-term bets, okay? And the reality of it is it's some of it's short-term bets, but a lot of it is short-term hedges, okay? And that's going to be a critical part of this. So why is this important? A lot of people don't know this, but the SPX, SPX option is huge, Okay. It's 10 times bigger than the SPY. It is two times bigger than the one S&P futures contract. So one SPX option controls $300,000 of the stock. So, you know, I've got on here 1.4, 1.5 million additional contracts being traded. Well, that's actually outdated. So I, I actually, I need to get my calculator here. Um, you know, the, the information of, of, of a couple months ago is outdated. So if we're talking 2 million, uh, additional contracts a day times 300,000, you know, if my math is right, that should be about, yeah. So that's $600 billion worth of stock being uh, controlled each and every day in SPX options. Okay. So we're talking, um, and if we add that, that's an addition. And if we add that to what was already there, we're talking almost a trillion dollars now worth of stock every day that's happening in the SPX options. That's a lot. So, so the thing here is that so goes the, SPX, so goes almost all stocks. Yeah, and so I'm going to show you guys some some charts of the SPX today, but I'm also going to show you some charts of Boeing and Netflix, which are some trades that we did using this as well. So, so, so goes the SPX, so goes almost all stocks, right? So meaning that if the S&P 500 is going up, guess what? It's going to lift most of the boats with it. Most stocks are going to go up with it. And if the S&P 500 is going down, guess what? Most stocks are going to be going down that day. However, what's wagging the tail of the SPX is the options market. So, so goes the SPX options market. So goes the SPX. So goes your favorite stock most of the time. Okay. So why, why is this important? Now, first of all, some of the things that's happening right now is you've got two main forces that are uh, impacting the market right now. So the first one is that now this purple line here, that's the VWAP line, volume weighted average price, is that funds that have to unload stock. So if they've got, you know, 20 million shares of Apple, 
they're not going to do right click sell 20 million shares of apple because they know they would absolutely implode the markets which would hurt themselves and of course everybody's trying to operate out of their own best interest right and so they actually set it into a computer and just say you need to sell um you know every time it gets to its volume weighted price average sell 5000 shares it plugs in an algorithm and that algorithm could last for weeks to get rid of that okay so on a day like monday okay on monday we gapped down and then we just walked down okay uh, this was a week ago a couple weeks ago and you can see this walk down and this is the institution selling it's just a walk down the s&p's were down like 70 points this day but then the other force is the economic data around inflation because that's the hot button and so the cpi comes out less than you know it's like inflation's less hot than expected and we get this huge short covering rally now since that happened guess what we're right back to where we were you know this is as of today right we're right back where we started and the walk down again you got more of that vwap walk down and that's really what the nature of this market is and in addition to while all this is happening, you've got all this options activity in the SPX essentially kind of controlling the market. So why, you know, why is this important? When there is demand for put protection, okay, right? So people, you know, you know, when I when I say buying puts, I don't mean that you know you bought ten puts to hedge your portfolio, which is great, but I'm talking about institutions buying thousands of these things, okay? Tens of thousands of these. So if the market declines, the puts will, of course, gain value, okay? You gotta remember, though, that when somebody is buying puts, this is a two-sided transaction. So if one person is buying puts, that means that another person, typically a market maker, which these days is mostly his computer, is selling that put to them. Now, in a market where it's going down a lot, if you are taking the other side of that trade and selling a put, you want to do what? You got to hedge yourself because, you know, if you sell a put at five and you got to buy it back at 40, you're going to get fired. And so what they do then is, you know, it's delta hedging. What that means, they're shorting S&P futures. OK, so they're shorting the indexes and index futures. And so if you buy a put that actually drives the market down. So if you think about that. That happened today. Uh, I've got a, you know, when we popped up towards the end of the day and hit 39.75, I don't know if you guys remember, we slammed back down to 39.50 really quick. And that's because uh, a bunch of hedgers loaded up on puts and they had to sell 15,000 futures contracts to hedge that. And that drove the market down. That's, that's what moves it. So when you have people scrambling to buy put protection and market makers scrambling to hedge the puts they're selling, you get massive bearish moves and big fast declines. But the opposite is also true. OK, so let's say that you buy that put at 10. It's at 30. You're like, wow, I've, I've hedged myself. Now I want to take that hedge off. So you sell the put. The market maker buys it back and then they no longer need their short future. So they buy the futures back. So guess what? Now the market races up. This is why we are seeing 100 point down days on the S&P 500 and 100 point up days. We never saw that during the nice, quiet bear market or bull market, right? So it's important to realize that that is the action that is driving the markets. Okay, so I accidentally found a way to chart these rotations and I've done a webinar about this and I'm not gonna go through all of that tonight. I wanna kind of kind of show some of the ways that you know we've been using it and then we'll kind of go a little bit of the origin story. So if this is your first time, you understand the tools. Um, but what's interesting about this is that you know, when my other kids, my two youngest would ask me, hey, you know, dad, can I show you a trade? And like, yeah, they were enthusiastic about it. And anytime I'd ask my oldest, um, you know, he just didn't want to do it. And so it was like, he's like, uh, I don't want to do it. So it was kind of, so he, when he finally asked me about it, it was kind of stressful. And so I actually worked on it for weeks before I showed him what I wanted him to do. And that's, that's how this kind of came to be, because I really had to take into account, all right, I want this guy, I want this kid to be successful in the market that we're in. Okay, we're, we ain't the same market we were is when my youngest kid started. So, and, and, and a large part of this came with the idea of really getting clear on grabbing the cash, not trying to be right, not trying to, oh, let's write out this trend for weeks and weeks. It's like, no, how, can, we, can we extract risk from the market today? You know, can we take cash from the market today and de-risk our overnight exposure in this insane up and down market? And so that was, that was really the goal. And it was nice because, you know, I, you know, 
frankly, it's like I, I got on a path where it's like, hey, I like making these bigger trades. I'm willing to hold on to calls on Google or Tesla for weeks at a time in order to try to capture this big trade. But those opportunities just weren't happening. And part of it is because, you know, like the VIX was crazy, like the options were crazy and the opportunities just weren't the same. And the trends to the downside weren't the same either. So so how does this work? So. So think of this as example as from the, you know, from the from the hedging, from the put options and, and all that kind of fun stuff. So you get a spike up like this. OK, remember the nice, the big round numbers were at 3850. OK, so then you got 3875. We punch up through 3875 and then everybody who bought hedges down here is now panicking and they're taking them off. Right. So that, that's what pushes us up. Now, what we want to know as traders is at what point is this hedging activity done? OK, and what happens is you'll see like these dots and what these dots represent is that the momentum of this, this panic de-risking is coming to a close. Right. And that's and, and we'll talk more about this, but that's uh, you know, you'll see these lines kind of rolling over here. And that's showing that that's you know, that, that we're looking for that to kind of end. And then you can see here, like at point number two, um, and, and this is a five minute chart over here. This is a one minute chart over here and a 30 minute chart over here. And so why, why 30 minute, five minute, one minute? Well, back in the days, you know, when we had a nice steady uptrend and at some point we will, and, and, and we do have that in some environments, you know, like, um, you know, oil was steady uptrend for most of the year. Uh, biotech still is. So, but, you know, for the broader markets, especially tech, it's just not, that's just not what's happening right now. So, um, so when you get in a situation like this, you know, you don't want to sit in front of a freight train and say, my God, we're rallying, we're rallying, we're rallying. Either A, if you're long, when do I get out? Because you don't want to get out too soon, but you don't want to hold on too long. Or two, if you're looking to fade it, if you're looking to this case to short it, you don't want to, you know, step in front of a freight train. And so what we want to know is when is this, you know, when you see something like this, it's kind of like, all right, people are taking off their hedges. It's pushing the S&Ps up. That's pushing all the stocks up. But at what point can we take action? And we can take action when the, accumulation of all this, you know, taking off the hedges wraps up. Okay. Well, how do we know that? Eh, well, you know, unless you're a market maker and you're sitting at a desk and you can see the order flow and you know, there's all these tools out there that, you know, you can use, but I like to try to kind of keep things simple. And so what I want to see is like, okay, the momentum is just running out. The, the order flow is coming to a standstill because when the order flow starts to drop, the market also starts to turn and it's subtle at first. And that's what we want to know. So that's when you see things like this, where it's like, okay, great. Now it's, it's over and I can do a trade. I could short the futures here. Uh, I could buy puts or I could sell a call credit spread, right? And there's, there's different reasons to do each one. And then you can see that it does indeed roll over. So all, you know, all these dots indicate the exhaustion of the de-risking activity, the exhaustion of the hedging activity. It's a measure of kind of the rolling over here. And then you can see we start to roll back over. And so if you remember, like there's that psychological chart where it's kind of like, you know, people get excited and they buy here and then it rolls over and they're, and they're frustrated, right? But the idea is to be on the opposite side of that. You know, either we're already getting in and then we're, you know, we're exiting here. But then instead of getting excited and buying right here, we're, we're catching the rollover. We're noticing where we have tools that are showing us, hey, all this hedging is, is done and it's time to get, you know, it's time to take the opposite side of this. And then we roll back over and that's and that's how we catch the move. And so that's the idea here where and we'll talk obviously more about these tools if you've seen them yet. But the red dots are kind of saying like, hey, this 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 exposure is is wrapping up. So the market, because these hedges are all done, the market's not going to go up anymore because that's what was driving it higher. And then boom, we get your, you know, you get your reversion to a mean. So, so, so that's one thing. The other thing that I wanted to talk about tonight that I haven't talked about before is really some of the tools that we've used, especially the quant pivots and the voodoo lines. And in addition, just understanding how important on the SPX and ES, the ES futures. Now, some, you know, they're not, obviously they don't trade they, they have a spread there, right? But they're still both important on both markets. But what I mean by quarter point levels is 3,900, right? 3,925, 3,950, 39. I don't really care about 39, 30, to, you know, 30. These are the levels where all the action is. They're the quarter point levels. If someone's going to hedge, they don't really, they're not going to 39.15. They're either going 39.25 or 3,900. And that's where the action is. So they become magnets. The quant pivots, uh, for those of you that don't know, that's something that uh, a friend of mine that has a fund that trades purely on AI, that's what they use. And then voodoo lines, if you don't know that, um, these are levels that are based 
kind of cemented in stone on prior Elliott Wave confirmed highs and lows, and they are remarkable. They can be there for decades and they work great. So we just want to understand those. So, so what does this mean? So if we're talking about voodoo lines, okay, and this is, you know, if you don't have these, don't worry about it, but a lot of folks have them. I just want to kind of talk about this real quick. So the voodoo lines provide market structure. So here's the S&Ps over the last week. And you'll notice here that there's a red line, there's a white line, and then there's two blue lines. So what's not shown here is a green line. That It's not in this range here, but of, of the voodoo lines, the red one's the most important. That's the strongest one. Then the second strongest is green. And then after that is white. And then the blue ones are kind of the, the way stops along the way. So what, so what do you notice here? Why is this important? We spike up to the blue line and we magically kind of come back and we hover around here. And then if we spike down, we kind of peter out at the snow line, right? Oh, we're coming back up. We pause, you know, we pause, we consolidate, we come up here. We come down here, we pause, we spike down here, and you know it's it's close enough, right? Then the CPI report comes out. Oh my God, we die right there, like we can't even get through it. And then you know, boom, boom, and here we are back at the snow line, right? So what? So why is this important? Well, if you use the voodoo lines now, okay. So here's this the voodoo lines, and now there's the voodoo line. And if you're nervous about it, it's like once you see the dots, okay, remember, because this huge move up is what? It's a lot of the short covering, you know, de-risking, all that kind of stuff. If you bought puts, you want to get out of them because they're losing value quickly. That pushes the market higher. You start to see the dots. That's telling you that all of the hedging is coming to an end. So if you're long, first of all, get out. You know, it's done. But otherwise, you can fade it. You can take the opposite side of this trade. All right. And that's something that's kind of cool. So that's a big one. Right. But also just the more, um, you know, we talked about this 21 EMA on the 30 minute chart. It might be a little hard to see here, but that's the 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 sky, uh, the blue skyline. You can see very vaguely there. But I love it when that lines up with that 21 EMA from the 30 minute chart. That's one of the highest probability you slam into that level, bada boom, bada bing. And of course, if you want to be safe, wait for the dots. The dots tell you that it's a loss of momentum, right? And so really starting to incorporate this more and more. Um, and then on, remember when there's big moves like this, this happened on Monday, we tagged that fire line on Friday, I believe. And then from there, we had the walk down. Well, how do you know you're going to get a walk down? Because you're not going to get above that eight EMA on the 15 minute chart. And, you know, what's nice about this is like, okay, well, when do you get in on something like this? Sometimes it's like you feel like you're, you know, shorting the lows. But look, you get a little rally here. You get that, you get that rotation. You know, we've got that little cross here. Boom, that's a short signal. And you can just kind of ride it down um, sometimes until you get a buy signal. Now, on a buy signal here, we're not going to go long. Why? Because you got the eight below the 21 and, you know, all that kind of stuff. Uh, but then if you get another signal here, great, you can reshort it, you're writing it down, you're writing it down. And then typically at the end of the day, you know, that's when you get all the short covering and it ends it up. So it gives you a map. And, and you can see here that, you know, we start off, we get rejected at the fire line, we come down, we test the skyline and we just kind of hang, hang out for there for a little bit. And then we walk down to the next skyline, right? And that becomes the next pausing point. So if you have the voodoo lines, it's great because this is a good map of the system. But if you don't have them, you can still just say, follow the arrows, right? And um, but that's it gives you a little bit of context uh, to the market structure, which obviously is great. The other one that's been fantastic is the quant pivots. And I use these for this on a two hour, um, on a two hour setting. So basically what that means is every two hours. And so how this works, if you're not familiar with these, and this are all the statistics up here of how they work, is that there are AI programs. And if you know we get a little plunge here and we get down to, this is the L2 level. So um, let me get a different color here, uh, yellow. So this is L2 and then this is H2. So that's the high. So th at these extreme levels, there is only a 4% uh, chance that we're going to close below a two-hour L2 level or above a two-hour H2 level. So you can see even right here, we spiked above it, but we ended up closing below it. Okay, We spiked above it, but we ended up closing below it. And you can see the statistics here, you know, this, in this case, over the last 67 instances. And, this, you know, and, it's, and it's similar even if you do hundreds of instances. Uh, the amount of time it closes is greater than H2, only 4.5% of the time. And the amount of times that it closes below L2, only 4.5% of the time. Um, and they're not the same. Like, And it's what's nice about this, since it's kind of AI-based, it's like you can see here that the downside here is certainly bigger than the upside. Okay, so And then sometimes upside's bigger. It's, it, it actually, it's 
you know, it's, it's like it's self-learning like that. So, um, so that's something that's, you know, and man, we slam right into there. Uh, you know, so, so all that too. So now I come over here and I've got this five minute chart and I've got the quant pivots on here. And all of a sudden it's like, oh my God, we're rallying, we're rallying. And remember if we're up here at, uh, H2, there's only a 4% chance we're going to be able to close above that. You started getting those red dots, even though we've had this amazing hell of a rally. It's like, great. Uh, if I'm long, I'm obviously taking profits and I'm going to start selling call credit spreads here, maybe buying puts and then boom. Okay. And then same thing here, you know, we come down, uh, come down into uh, L2, right? Only a 4% chance we're going to get through that. Great, great place to go long. Um, we'll go, come up here to uh, same thing, came up there to H2, get rejected almost to the T. And then in this case, come down to uh, uh, L1. It holds great. And you can see on and on and on. So, so if you've got, if you're familiar with the quant pivots, and if you're not, um, I'll show you how to get those at the end of this. But if you're familiar with those, this is a, just a great tool to add. And it just kind of, it, it provides a sandbox. I always say like, look, we want to know what is a sandbox that the market's going to be playing in? And that's the border. Okay. That's, you know, the, the price is typically not going to go outside of the sandbox. So if we know the borders of the sandbox, we can see that in advance we can plan for it and not freak out you know if we get to that level so i just want to know where those are and again what's great about this is that we can have that confidence you know here it looks kind of scary like oh my god it's going to go up forever but we're starting to see those dots and that's telling us hey it's it's losing its mojo here right that's the beginning of the end same thing here we got those dots it's losing its mojo here it's the beginning of the end it's it seems like when something's going up it's going to go up forever and it seems like when something's going down it's going to go down forever but it ain't the case although it seems like it's sometimes in the moment so in addition uh to these known levels the market's ebb and flow as it cruises from level to level so we also have these moving averages these i call them you know the white yellow and blue lines these are just higher time frame moving averages that are imported and they're typically the ones that have the most impact on price. For example, the eight period EMA from the 15 minute chart really drives a lot of price action. The 21 EMA from the 30 minute chart drives a lot of price action. And so I just want to know where those are without having to look at 40 freaking charts, right? And so we got those on there. So um, now what's nice about this is in this particular case, you know, there's not necessarily any key levels here, but it's like, oh, we're just, you know, we got rejected at the 50 EMA from the hourly chart and we're finding support at the 21 EMA uh, from the 30 minute chart. It doesn't really matter what they are, you know, hey, the cool, the white line. But, you know, look, when you get these arrows, that's the whole key here is when you get the arrows against it, you can have a lot of confidence that instead of rolling over and dying here, we're in fact starting a new adventure to the upside. OK, and that's the idea. It's like instead of wondering, like, oh, are we going to go up or down here? You can actually see these markets rolling higher. You can see these markets rolling lower. Okay. So what did we learn or what have we learned kind of going through all this? And, and the idea with this, there's a couple different ways to do this. Of course, um, you can, um, you know, of course, you know, I, you can buy a call. Well, I think I wrote that in here, right? It's okay to buy calls. It's okay to buy puts. It's okay to use futures. And I, and I like to do that sometimes, but the, what really comes down to trading is that when you're right, it doesn't really matter what you use. If you go long futures and it works, great. If you buy calls and it works, great. The key in trading is that what happens when it doesn't work the way you thought. And so that's why I'm a, I'm a fan of these zero days to expiration SPX spreads. And so, you know, instead of, um, you know, a lot of times it's not like, oh, I'm going to sell, you know, normally if we're like, oh, I'm going to sell, you know, this put spread on Tesla. And, you know, the idea is it's going to expire worthless or I'm going to buy it back for 10 cents. And that's not what we're doing with SPX because it's, it is kind of volatile and it's kind of weird, but it might be something where it's like, you know, you, you sell a $10 wide spread at four bucks. Okay. And you buy it back at two, right? Well, that doesn't sound very sexy. Ironically though, if you buy an option and two it, sell it at four, it sounds great. Like, wow, I just doubled my money. But if you sell it at four, it buy it at two. A lot of times people are like, well, what if I would have let it, you know, go worthless? And it's like, bro. And, and so it's, so it's things like that, where you just want to get our arms wrapped around two points is two points, whether you double your money from a debit or not pull out, you know, two bucks from a credit, you still made, you know, that two points. But the most important thing um, with all of that is that, so let's say that you go long futures. Okay. I'm going to go long futures and you have a 10 point stop. Okay. 
a 10 point flush in the S and P's can happen almost at any point. And at that point you're out, you know, $500 a contract done. Okay. But let's say that instead you do a put credit spread $10 wide. Okay. At $4. And if the S and P's flush 10 points, guess what? Your spread's going to go about to 470. Okay. So instead of risking 10 points, you're risking 70 cents on that 10 point flush. That's the whole key there. And it doesn't take much for it to kind of come back and, you know, you can work your way out of it. So that's the why I like the spreads uh, on zero days to expiration. Um, now, if you position size incorrectly, it can go horribly wrong. You know, if you do like a $20 wide spread and you max out your entire account, yeah, guess what? If it doesn't work, you're going to blow yourself up just as easy. Uh, so, you know, position sizing as always is the key. But what's nice about this is it's very, very forgiving. It's very, very forgiving. All right. So what are some examples of stuff like this? So I've done, I do stuff in the futures. I do directional stuff in the futures. Typically not, you know, huge size, but good enough. But in the SPX, I'm more comfortable doing bigger size where, you know, it's like, okay, I can sell, you know, a bunch of contracts for 11. And I think in this case, bottom back at like three. So it was actually pretty good because we had a nice run. So that was, you know, it was good for 300 grand. Um, it doesn't always work like that though, right? Sometimes I'll put on a spread and it's like, I do need to get out of it. I, I sold it at 11. I got to buy it back at 13 and I lose two points. Um, but then, you know, there's another, you know, you kind of wait for the next setup. So um, I had one the other day. Uh, you know, someone was asking like, oh, don't you miss making big trades? Um, but I had one the other day that was pretty solid. This was, I think, two weeks ago. And this was the day where, you know, the S&Ps, um, they're up like 80 points, you know, in one day. And that's great because so the main, so the main difference on this day is that I did the same trades, but instead of getting out at a 40% profit, I just let them expire because why? Because we weren't breaking the ADMA. So I sold a put spread here and just, you know, bought it back at a nickel, basically max profit. And then I sold another one. And then I sold another one and then I sold another one. So in a normally market, it's, oh, you're selling it. You're buying it back for 40%. You're waiting for another one. But if you just keep ebbing like this, you just sell it. And you, it's called rolling your deltas. And um, so those can be very, very profitable days. I'm kind of wondering if tomorrow might be like that, you know, depending on the, the PPI and all that. But we'll see. And obviously that works in a strong uptrend or downtrend. So... So the other thing I've been doing, and this is something that we'll release, uh, you know, uh, we're, we're, we're doing updates to these tools. And so for those of you that already have them, you know, of course, you know, you'll get a copy of this. But uh, I missed a signal the other day. And so I called up Eric. I said, hey, I need to have something on the chart that's like, don't be a dumbass. Like, you know, you're missing this. And um, so what I did with that, so this was the, this was it. So I was, and I'm trying to now remember exactly what happened here. Oh, I was hell bent on the markets going to 4,000. So here we are at 3970 and I saw that we were rolling over, but I'm like, in my mind, like, we're just going to come down a little bit and then we're going back up to 4,000. So I was trying to be right. Okay. I was more concerned with being right than with making money. And it's, you know, it's just ha hazard of the job. And so I, my don't be a dumbass signal was like, Hey, look, if the 20 minute, like, so this is multiple time frames, right? You got the five minute, the 10 minute, the 15, the 20, the 30 and the hourly. So you're importing you know, all these different, like uh, 310 MACDs from different time frames, so you can see them all simultaneously. And so, you know, when they're all moving together like that, you don't want to ignore that. But really, the don't be a dumbass signal was, look, if the 20 minute, it's okay, okay, if the five minute one crosses, yeah, you know, it's that's like a heads up and that may not last very long. But if the 20 minute crosses, do not fight that. That's a big cross. And so when the 20 minute crossed to the downside, I missed that, okay, over here, because I just wasn't, I was just like, oh, you know, whatever. Um, but now I've got a little signal here that says, you know, hey, the, the 20 minute is crossing. So even though you may think we're going to 4,000, we're not. Get out of your position. So that's that's why. I, so so this will be released. I'm, I'm adding a few more things and tweaking a few more things out, but we'll, we'll get that to you guys. Um, the other thing, of course, that I found that I really like is that you throw this 21 EMA on the 30 minute chart. And then what I found is that if we get about 1% away to the downside, or 1% away to the upside, that also, you know, and again, we're not, you know, if there's a level there, like a quant pivot, awesome, a voodoo line, awesome, but they're not always there. You know, there's turns in between those levels. Um, and if you don't have the quant pivots and you don't have the voodoo lines, that's fine because you can do it like this. But, you know, we get up here and it looks, oh my God, but, you know, we, then we come back, right? And then we come all the way down here and then we come back. We come all the way down here. But we'll look at, we're getting all the dots, we're getting all the arrows. They're telling us it's safe, okay, to come back. And this is, for me, a typical like, oh, let's get in here and then, you know, let's get our 40 or 50% of max profit and, and get out. So typically I'm doing spreads on those. This is no man's land. There's nothing to do. It's just, you know, it's just chop. 
Um, but, you know, oh, great, we got an extreme, boom, back. Uh, you know, you get an extreme and all that kind of stuff. So, and here it's falling, right? And it's like, oh, it's falling, it's falling, falling. But then you finally get arrows for what? A snapback. So that's the kind of stuff that I think is, is helpful. So what I like about these is that the trades later in the day are super nice, uh, simply because the theta decay is so fast. You know, if you do a trade at, say, 9, 9 a.m. Central, uh, even if it's zero days to expiration, it still is a little bit more directional at that point because you don't get a really a lot of theta decay. So if I sell a put credit spread, you know, typically to hit a 40% target, I need the S&Ps to go up about 15 points. Later in the day, though, okay, if it's, you know, 130 and I sell a at the money put credit spread, I just need it not to fall. You know, even if it's chopping sideways, I'm making money like every five minutes on theta decay. Uh, the downside of that, though, is if it does go against you, it's going to go against you pretty quick. So you got a position size lighter at the end of the day, bigger at the beginning of the day, because if it goes against me at the beginning of the day, it's very forgiving. Uh, like each 10 points in the S&Ps is about one point in the spread for the first two hours of the day. So, you know, it's you can that's not a big deal. Like uh, a lot of, you know, a lot of times people say, oh, yeah, I'm going to have a four point stop on my, you know, S&Ps for my day trade. Well, if you got a four point stop on your spread, you're given the S&P's 40 points of room. That's to me, in my mind, that's actually too much room, but because it takes a long time for that to recover. Um, but again, that's what's the nice about this. So I, you know, I, I like the goal of about, you know, 1% a day. Um, if I'm feeling, if the markets are a little bit swinging a little bit more, maybe, you know, 5% is a super aggressive day. Um, but if you think about that, you know, it's a uh, 1% a day consistently. Uh, that's 1,200% a year. Now, obviously, you're not going to make exactly 1% a day, but the lesson here is that if you can average 1% a day, so one day you may, might, might make 2%, the next day you might lose 1%, but that's an average of 1% a day, um, it can turn into a substantial return at the end of the year. The secret is, you know, don't have huge losses. So that's where you position size. You don't need to get too crazy on that. Um, so a typical trade for me on a larger account would be like a $25 wide spread, 3,900, 3,075 slightly in the money, sell it at 11, buy it back at six. Okay. And that's a, that's a, my bread and butter kind of a trade. Um, but I'm also playing around with further out of the money options. Um, also going into the next day, doing some overnight iron condors and stuff like that. But that's, uh, you know, it's kind of nice because, you know, you get the arrows, you get the timing and you get the theta decay all in your favor. So, um, one thing is, you know, and I have found this is what I, you know, again, I put in the don't be a dumbass thing is that anytime I really get hurt, it's because I'm ignoring the system. It's because I'm thinking like we're going to 4,000 and I'm kind of ignoring the system. So I'm trying to, you know, make sure that I'm doing this in a way where it's like, okay, let me just zone in on this. Um, and uh, I've also done some trades on the NDX. And when they work, they work great. When they don't work, it's horrible because they're hard to get out of. So my personal recommendation is to kind of be careful with the NDX. Um, but it's fine, you know, doing straight futures and stuff like that too. Um, and then for a smaller account, I do $10 wide. I personally prefer $10 wide to $5 wide. You know, the dirty little secret of $5 wide is that the, the option that you buy, uh, for protection doesn't lose value very fast. And so, you know, what I found is on a $5 wide option, $5 wide spread to get your 40% target, you know, the S and P has got to go about 20 points on a $10 wide spread. They only have to go about 15 points. So you need more movement to get your target in the five door wide spread uh, simply because of the nature of that closer option. So if you normally do two five dollar wide spreads, you can do one ten dollar wide spread. It's about the same risk to reward, and you're going to put the odds in your favor uh, a little bit better there. And you can do micro futures, of course, and all that kind of stuff, too. Um, and then the other thing I'll do, too, is sometimes is just iron condors for the next day. So, you know, in this case, it was like, oh, I'm going to sell this for 355 with the idea that we're going to have a trading range. And that was after we'd already closed out some uh, put spreads and all that kind of stuff, too. Now, one question I get, too, is like, well, geez, I don't necessarily want to do this zero days to expiration. So what about swing trades? So absolutely. So we did a swing trade. I just added this one today. Um, my son wanted to do it. So we did it at the end of the day. Um, if it's still a valid setup, I'll, I'll post it tomorrow. So here's the 30 minute chart of Netflix. Uh, there's a squeeze. We've got, uh, yeah, I agree. I agree, Sean. $5 spreads aren't worth it. Uh, we've got a buyer over here. And so he bought the $300 call and sold the 330 for contracts, uh, $12.80. And I went ahead and did the same. Obviously, I did a little bit more in mine. 
Um, but the idea is like, you know, can Netflix turn this here and maybe get up to about 318 bucks? You know, it's about an $8 move. Uh, so I like that trade. And that's a trade that I'm not trying to get out of that day. I'm not looking at the one minute chart or the five minute chart. And um, obviously, you know, we'll see how see how that does tomorrow. We also did one recently last week, and this was great in Boeing where, you know, we got in, there was, um, you know, we got all the arrows and all that kind of fun stuff. And uh, this thing exploded higher, you know, and it got up to that top of that hourly uh, ATR, you know, three ATR channel. And then we got out. So, I mean, that was a super easy trade in a crazy market. The market was even down that day when Boeing was up. So, so that was fun. So you can absolutely, you don't have to day trade. So, you know, if you're working or something like that, my recommendation is use a 30 minute chart. Um, obviously you can use the daily with a 30 minute, ideally in a 30 minute chart, you're typically going to be in it for a couple of days. Uh, this isn't something where you got to stare at the chart or anything like that. And so I've been doing more and more of those recently as well. A uh, question from Dan, how many vertical spreads do you make up per week on average? I would say on average two a day. Sometimes three a day, but I would say it seems like two a day. There seems like there's a sweet spot where there's a good one in the morning. Uh, you know, it seems like around nine, between nine and nine thirty, there's a good one that sets up, and then you know a little later in the afternoon, and that that seems to be uh, on average. Um, yeah, I'll show you at the end of this. If you don't have these, some of these tools, I'll show you at the end of this how you can get them. And yeah, and my my own goals have changed too. I mean, you know, I've done obviously if you guys have been around at all, I mean, I've done some pretty big trades, you know, multi million dollar trades, and and they're great. Um, but you know, if I'm in them, it, it's kind of a distraction too. It's like I gotta you know ch check them, make sure that the futures aren't crashing overnight and stuff like that. Um, and so this is typically a little bit more relaxing. Or if I'm on a vacation, I can just stop trading. My wife and I went to Turks and Caicos at the beginning of November, I didn't trade once. I didn't have any positions that I had to look at, you know? And I, I mean, I think there was one day when the S and P's were up 158 points, but you know, but it was, it was worth it to have that peace of mind and to completely disconnect and, 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 and hang out and hang out with Maria. So, so that's nice too, where you have a lot more flexibility with your schedule. Now, the one interesting thing here about zero days to expiration that I really like too, is that here you're going to see that there's this day where the S and P's, you know, they're up like 80 points this day. And then on this day over here, they're flat. They're really choppy. Okay. But on both days, I made about the same amount of money. So on the directional day, you know, um, my profit's there. And on the choppy day, now I did have an additional trade on there as well. But if you're we just looking at the S&Ps, it was about the same. So what's interesting about this is with spreads, remember, if it goes up, that's great. Um, but if it, as long as it doesn't go up very much, you know, that's also still great. So that's, that's what I was, I find kind of interesting about this is that you don't necessarily need big moves, um, to make, to make your gains. So, so that's the thing is I don't, you know, I don't necessarily care if the market is trending or not. It's obviously easier when it's trending, but it doesn't have to be trending to generate that cash. And so I always say like, what the mind is like water when it's turbulent, it's difficult to see. Uh, but when it's calm, everything becomes clear. Okay, so real quick four slides here on the backstory of this. So, um, you know, my my two youngest, is, this is Dylan and and it's Avery. They've always been interested in trading. I've asked questions and they'll kind of say, hey, I need, you know, I need $75 for Roblox. And so I'll, you know, I'll turn it over to them. They'll go through a couple of stocks. They have some luck that they watch and, and then they'll decide what to do. My oldest was always like, you know, for whatever reason, just didn't jive with them. He's like, ah. Um, but what was funny is over the summer, you know, some of his friends were working at Subway and as he asked him about it, he was thinking of applying there and you know, they say, Hey, look, I'm all for, you know, go work and stuff like that. And, um, but he said, you know, dad, they're saying that they're making about 80 bucks after taxes, you know, working eight hours. Um, could I learn to trade? And so, you know, it's kind of like, you know, oh, now you want to learn how to trade. But I, I also was like, no, awesome. This is a skill I would love to teach you. Um, you know, it's been kind of a, a you know, and, and I was excited because he was finally interested, but I was also terrified because I knew if he got off on the wrong foot, it, it, you know, it wouldn't work. So what I did is just kind of reverse engineered what his goals were. So his goal was to make $100 a day. So this meant no overnight trades, right? Um, which would be about the same as, as he would make working a day, a shift at Subway. You know, no overnight trades, um, you know, not having to deal with that overnight risk using stocks. Okay. Cause not options or futures. I didn't want that 
you know, additional confusion there. An easy entry signal that he could follow even if I wasn't there. All right, so he didn't have to like, eh, is this, you know, is this okay? Uh, and an easy exit signal. Okay, and the idea here is consistency way, 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 way more important than big trades. And so what we ended up doing is just taking, in this case, it was the squeeze histogram across multiple time frames and just bringing it on all into one chart. So he could see what was going on. So that was the first thing. Okay. So it's like, oh, geez, you know, here we are up here. And then all the histograms and all these time frames are rolling over. Guess what? This is going to die. Right. Well, but I also knew that that was a lot of squiggly lines. He actually didn't like the lines. He didn't get the lines. So, um, so what we did is then we just added arrows. And so the arrows just say, like, hey, you know, um, you know, see these arrows here, that means two of the squiggly lines cross the zero line. And so that became his, that became his signals, the arrows. So if there's arrows, he could buy them and either it hit his target or he'd get a sell a posing arrow and he'd just get out. So, so typically what he would do is, you know, like 50 shares of you know, stock, sometimes a hundred shares if it was lower priced, but he just wanted to make a hundred dollars a day. So the, the benefit of a hundred dollars a day and such a clear target, and this was actually an eye opener for me, because typically I'll get in and just like, Hey, let's see, let's let the market decide. But he would get, he would do it where he would just get his hundred dollars and be out. So if he would buy 50 shares of spy at, you know, 328, then he would just set an exit order for 330 and he would just kind of keep an eye on it. And you know, it was kind of fascinating or, you know, it was different things like that. And he didn't end up doing spy very much because he figured out it didn't move as well as things like GameStop or Tesla. Um, but here's like, here's a trade he did in GameStop. And on this one, he's like, okay, instead of getting out at a hundred dollars, I'll get out when um, I get a sell arrow. So he got in on this arrow and then he just got more buy arrows. He never got a sell arrow. And so by the, you know, he, but he closed it at the end of the day because his rule was an overnight trade. So he made $421 on that. So he's like, Oh, that was, that was awesome. Um, and then this is another one on UNH, which is one he liked to trade over the summer and same thing where he bought it, but he never got a sell signal. So he ended up closing it at the end of the day and making $354. And so I thought that was cool because it's like, well, I'm either going to, you know, at first it was always like, Oh, I'm going to get a hundred dollars to get out. And then it's like, okay, then I'm going to wait. Let's see if it looks strong in this. And he's shorted too, not as much, but it's like, I'll, you know, I'll just wait. But he didn't want to hold overnight. So, you know, as he got to the close, he would just get out. So what I thought was really important here is he really had a strong why. His strong why was, I want to make as much money as if I was working in an eight-hour shift at Subway. And so it got me thinking about my why. And, you know, for me, it's kind of, well, you know, and, and honestly, I think I've probably made my life a little too complicated by getting really into things like, oh, I, got to, I could probably get this rare coin and get this rare coin. And it's like, well, why not just, you know, not worry about all that and just, you know, focus on like a simpler life, which is my goal for 2023. Uh, but this is one of the coins I got. It's awesome. But, um, you know, that does kind of like, you know, that does put pressure on us. Like, oh, OK, I got to, you know, I certainly got to get up and trade today uh, to pay off this coin that I want at auction. So I feel like I've uh, got all the coins that I want. Uh, I'm trying to wrap up paying those off, and then um, you know we'll see what the next what the next why is. But I think it's important, you know, whether it's your bills that are going to be paid um, or whatever it is, but just have a reason for it because otherwise, you know, you're just kind of it's like a video game, and uh, you know, video games become not real after a while. So I'm I'm a huge 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 fan. Is at the end of every week, wire out part of the profits. I like to auto wire. You know, it's like, okay, you know, a thousand bucks is going to be wired out of my account on Friday morning, or typically I'll do Thursday morning. So it'll post on Friday. That means then, okay, I got to make a thousand bucks. You know, it's like, you got to pay that VIG. And um, it, I found that it, you know, it makes you trade a bit more disciplined. Um, and it doesn't mean that make a thousand, you know, in a perfect world in that case, you know, you know, say you're trading a $50,000 account and your goal is to make a thousand bucks a week, wire it out. And in a perfect world, may, maybe you make $1,200 that week. So you wire out a thousand Okay, but you made twelve hundred, so your account actually the NLV from Monday to Friday actually went up two hundred bucks, even after wiring out a thousand. That's the perfect scenario where you're wiring out money and still growing your account um, a little bit each week. So I love that kind of stuff. Okay, a couple other examples. You know, again, NDX. I've done some trades in NDX, and like I said, I uh, they're great when they work, and it's horrific when they don't. And uh, I do it once in a while. Typically, like today, um, I. I was thinking about it today and I didn't, but the NDX was actually acting pretty good, uh, pretty good today. So, so some of the things, and I've heard this too, a lot of times people are looking at all the volatility that's happening 
um, you know, crypto's crashing, real estate's rolling over, stock market, uh, tech stocks dying. Um, and, you know, it can be sad and frustrating. It's like, oh, it's out of my control. But on the other hand, it can be kind of relaxing. It's like, hey, it's out of my control. Why am I worried about it? You know, I can't do anything about it. So you just want to have a nice systematic approach to doing it. Um, question, when you sell a spread in the afternoon, does it expire that day or you set it to expire the following day? Okay, so Kyle, good question. So I do both. So in the afternoon, I'll typically sell a spread that's going to expire that day. And there's pros and cons of that. The pros are is if it works, you get that theta decay really fast. But if you get some weird shenanigans at the end of the day, it's like, oh, that, you know, that can hurt. So you got to be a little careful. The other thing I'll do if it's later in the day and the trend looks good, whether it's an uptrend or a downtrend, I'll do it for the next day. So that way, you know, I've got a little flexibility there. And, and sometimes I'll hold it overnight. Um, but, you know, there's nothing wrong with, you know, going out to the next day to give yourself a little cushion. OK, and I, and I like that. And it gives you the flexibility to do that. Uh, do day trading rules apply? OK, so good question. So the couple of ways there is a way around that. So with SPX. If you have a and by day trading rules, you're you mean pattern day trading rules. If you got an under twenty five thousand dollar account, right? SPX. If you get in and out, that does require count as a day trade. If you sell it and let it cash settle, so the beauty of SPX is that it cash settles, meaning you never get assigned. You can just let it go into the close and let it cash settle, and it does not count as a day trade. Um, so that's a way around it. And so there are ways around it with SPX. The other way around it, though, is to do options on ES. Okay, ES or futures. So you have to get approved for it. But options on futures work exactly the same as options on SPY or options on SPX. And the beauty of this is that once you're approved for it, there is no um, the, the the day trading pattern rule does not apply to futures options. So that's kind of nice. And ES options, by the way, are half the size of the SPX. So the SPX is the biggest contract. SPY is a tenth the size of the SPX. And the ES options are half the size of the SPX. Um, OK, so what was the size of my son's account? He had a, a, a $10,000 account. Yeah. No. So obviously, I set up the account for him. And the idea was, hey, if you lose money, you, you got to go get a job and pay me back. And if you make the money. So you know, I did stake him. Um, yeah, just to be clear on that, but he was able to do that on a $10,000 account, you know, hundred bucks a day, hundred bucks a day. So, um, so that's my goal with this to kind of, my goal is to kind of get into a steadier routine, um, you know, quit buying expensive coins, get into a steadier routine. Um, now one last thing here is that we also added this tool for the 310 MACD because the 310 MACD is the fastest signal. And so you can see here at this moment when we turn, now, I'm a huge fan of the RAF, uh, but I like it on 30-minute charts and above. Uh, I don't really use it on five-minute charts, but it's okay. It actually works pretty decent, but there's a lot of noise, too, on a five-minute chart. So I love it on 30-minute charts and above. The regular 1226 MACD, pretty slow. You know, it, it, it kind of started rolling here after the fact. The histogram, it's okay. You know, it's it kind of a little bit after the fact. And then, of course, the, the 310 MACD started started rolling over quicker. So I was like, okay, we got to add one of these as well. So we did the same thing, you know, all multiple time frames, 310, 310 MACD and boom. So that's what you see um, on a lot of the charts. So on something like this, you know, the market's coming down and you can see that the, you know, the five minute, the 10 minute and the 15 minute and the 20 minute, the 30 minute and the one hour, 310 MACD are starting to turn. Uh, when you see the dots, that means that they've, you know, they've turned and you see the arrows, you can see that they cross. And typically when you see the arrows, that's a little safer. Um, and so that that's what we're kind of looking at there. And um, so the idea with this is that you know, for me, for the most part now is really just kind of focused on getting that. So with swing trades, what was always tough is that, you know, I might have like, OK, say Amazon, Tesla and Boeing. You know, I got loads of calls on all of them and you might have two good days, but then you got to ride through a three day pullback. And so, you know, you can't really make money every day doing that because you're riding at the pullback. So it's like, oh, I was up five thousand. I was up seven thousand. Now today I'm down three thousand. Now today I'm down four thousand. And so that kind of gets frustrating. So I kind of like the zero DTE. But there's certainly a place, and, and like I said, I, I had Boeing for three days last week. Um, you know, I may have Netflix for a couple of days. And so there are there are things like that too. Um, yeah, no, you can settle the SPX, but the, well, so the, the, 
well, the loss would be greater than anticipated. I'm assuming you're like exchange fees. So if you're at max loss, they're also going to add exchange fees onto that. But you absolutely want to be clear what your max loss is, right? You don't. Um, um, but otherwise, yeah, it, it's just based on that on that settlement price. If they, if that's what you're asking. So one of my favorite quotes: uh, Traders are not born with the patience gene. Uh, they have to learn it mostly through brutal lessons. Trading is merely a game of the patient taking money from the impatient. So in trading, it is really finding the right balance of patience and determination. Um, and you only need to, you know, typically any trader problem can be solved with determination, patience, and courage. A lot of times people, the biggest thing I hear from people is they're scared. You know, they, they fear the unknown. And it really, that's just a kind of a mind flip. Instead of fearing the unknown, instead of focusing on the fear of the unknown, Focus on the risk of the unknown. Okay, so yeah, we don't know what's going to happen tomorrow, right? Well, if you got a position on where if the market goes down 50 points at the open, it's going to wipe you out. Yeah, I'd be scared too. But if you got a position on and the position goes against you and you're only going to lose 3% of your account if it does, that's focusing on the risk of the unknown. That makes this game a lot easier. So doesn't you know? It's not about being right. It's about you know managing that risk. So in working with James, I developed the following tools uh, that have made my trading life a lot easier. And it's the squeeze histogram rotation. And this monitors the squeeze histogram on six time frames. And then the trend rotation tool, this is for faster terms, also monitors on six time frames. And then there's a third version of this called SD, which is also included. Um, it's not listed right there, but the SD means standard deviation. And, and I'll show you an example of that here in a second. And then also um, there are um, things like the Keltner channel, uh, tool that you can import this Keltner channel from other time frames. Key moving average tools that you can import, you know, moving average from other time frames, and it really just makes a nice kind of a a clean uh, a clean setup there. Um, so here's here's the three tools side by side. So um, the trend rotation standard deviation tool, the trend rotation regular tool. And then the squeeze rotation tool. And so people ask, like, oh, what's the difference? What's the difference? Well, the SD is the fastest. Okay. So you're going to get your arrow first, you know, the cross first on SD. There's pros and cons of that. The pros are you see the signal, right? So it's really good for getting in. It's horrible for managing because you're going to get a lot of cross signals as well. You know, because it's so fast, you're going to, you know, boom, boom, boom. It's all over the place. But I love that first cross. So then after that, I'll kind of look at the reg. And the reg is the next one to go. Okay. So you can see right here, it's just barely crossing here, whereas SD, it's long gone, right? And then the histogram is the slowest. And it's and you might think like, oh, if it's slow, I don't want to use it. But um, the thing with it is you don't get false signals. Okay. And so what I like to manage a trade on, so I might, you know, see that first arrow here and maybe scale in, I get a confirmation here, but then I'll man it might manage it over here because you're not going to get shaken loose. You know, it's a very like calm, you know, it's a very calm uh, kind of a thing. So those are the three kind of, those are the tools that you get. That's, you know, typically when you get this, uh, you'll be able to set up a chart just like this because all that stuff is included. And then of course, if you do have the quant pivots or the voodoo lines, then my God, add those on here because that'll also make your life a lot easier. Um, so I always like to remember this. One of my mentors told me, it's like, at the end of the day, it's not about being right. It's not about catching every trade. It's not about, you know, did you miss the trade in GameStop? It's about, you know, do you start, you know, the year, um, do you start the year? What does your equity curve look like at the beginning of the year into the end of the year? And, you know, you know look, there's going to be some, you know, some headaches along the way. Right. But, you know, at the end of the day is, are you higher? And if you are, then you're doing your job. And if you're not, it's like, okay, well, what, what's, what's causing, you know, what's causing this? And so with the right strategy, that's the goal. I mean, it's the only goal as a trader. It, it doesn't, you don't have to trade everything, right? You can trade Netflix the rest of your life. And as long as your equity curve looks like that, you're doing fine. So the idea with this is, you know, we're not, you know, a lot of times traders chase, they get in late and then, you know, they get flushed out on a normal reversion, but we want to do the opposite. We want to get in early and get out early. And so the secret is being able to go with the flow of what is happening right now, not with what you think might or should happen, i.e., oh, I think this is going to 4,000 instead of just saying, you know what, I'm just going to, um, you know, you know, when you're dancing with the market, it's best to let it lead, right? And so it's like, I'm just going to let the market lead me on this dance. And so that's something I, you know, I always got to think about as well, you know, the post-it note. Um, and it's also important to control the emotions of fear and greed. 
everybody thinks fear is the worst emotion, but the worst emotion in trading is euphoria. You know, if you have euphoria, then you do stupid things because you forget there's potential risk that could happen. So the idea is then just take the emotion out of it. Find a, the key is finding a position size where you don't want to be bored. So if you have a million dollar account, you're trading a one lot, you know, you're not going to feel any emotion, right? That's like trading a demo account. But, but maybe that's all you need is if you're just looking to make a couple hundred bucks a day. But you don't want to be, if you're, if you're like completely tensed up and freaking out, you're trading too big, um, A, or you got to build up your intestinal food, fortitude, B, which means you just got to get used to be comfortable being uncomfortable. And then a other part of that too is just having a system that you're confident in. And that's a really game changer there when you have a system that you're confident in. So some of you already have this stuff. I'm gonna tell you a few things here that are coming up. If you don't have these tools, I wanna encourage you to take a look at this. It's a, you know, it is it is a game changer. A lot of people in our gold room are talking about this, they're using it. And I am going to be doing live trading with this on January 18th and the 24th. So this gives you a chance to get the tools, start using them. Um, there's, uh, you, know, you can even come into our, into our gold room and ask questions and then we'll trade together. And then I'll do kind of a back to basics on January 12th, just a, a kind of an overview. And then, you know, of course the, the live training is great. So what does this entail? What's happening? So one thing I want to point out is, you know, you do want to get these, if you're, if you're interested in these, today is the eighth, but I encourage you to get these before the 19th, um, after the 19th. Uh, this will be 1197. This will be 1497, and this will be 2497. Before the 19th, um, you can get this indicator bundle at 897. The live trading bundle at 1197, and then the membership bundle, which is great, uh, something that we haven't done before for 1997. So what does this mean? So the indicator bundle means that you are going to get um, the the trend rotation tool and the squeeze rotation tool, and this of course includes the SD version. So that's essentially three tools plus all the you know the extra uh, Keltner channels and those moving averages and those tools and stuff like that too. Um, in addition, I did a four hour class on this. Uh, gosh, six weeks ago, you'll get a recording of that, and then we're going to be doing a, a back to basics kind of a live session on January twelfth. Uh, that is one twelve on that day. And then. If you do the live trading bundle, which I encourage simply because, you know, trading is like golf. If you've never played golf before and you read 20 books on it over the course of a month, what's going to happen when you go to play golf? You're probably no more than anybody else out there, but you are going to suck because you have not swung the club with a professional. Like, you know, am I, are you holding it too tight, right? You know, you, have you actually done the physical mechanics of swinging the club? And it's the same thing in trading. And so I encourage the live trading because then you can kind of ask questions. You can, you know, take some trades and, you know, we can trade together. And that's, that's, that helps a lot. So with this, of course, you get everything uh, that's included in this package. Plus you get the two days of live trading. And I believe that is the 18th and 24th of January. Okay. And again, remember that this price will go up to 1497 after December 19th. And then the membership bundle is just, it's all of this plus uh, an annual subscription to our, our Options Gold Room. So our Options Gold Room is our flagship community. And what that entails is, and I think I've got a screenshot of that. Let me just look at this real quick. Yeah, so this is what the that looks like. So, you know, there's a, you know, so if you're on your laptop, you'll see our trading room. So there's a community where you can talk with each other. We post specific trades that we're doing up here, and then we share our screen. So you can actually see exactly what we're looking at and, you know, as we're placing our trades. Um, in addition, we have a, um, that comes with a push notification service, iOS, Android. So, you know, if you're at work and it's like, oh, what's going on? You know, you can actually listen to our chat or, you know, you see the alerts and stuff like that. So it's a great way to kind of learn, have a community. You know, you're not alone in doing all this. Um, one thing that's kind of we got coming up too is we do have a live event. Uh, coming up in Austin. Um, it's it's for the live seats. I don't, I think there may be one or two seats left. I'm not sure, uh, but we are opening it up to uh, uh, live stream. So if you're interested in that, you know, the live event's awesome. You know, you get to hang out with other traders. You get to get out of your busy life and just focus, make new friends. And, you know, what I've always found, if you're really interested in something and you immerse yourself for like 36 hours, you're going to make more connections and have more aha moments in those 36 hours than you are in six months at home in your busy life. You know, you got all kinds of stuff coming at you. You don't have time to get really zoned out and focused on one thing. Right. And so that's why these events are great. Uh, we haven't done one since begin before COVID. So this is our first live event in three years. Hopefully we all remember how to speak in front of an audience. 
Um, but you can also live stream that. Okay, so what happens here? Uh, also, if you are uh, if you if you like this, but you're like, uh, you know, I'm I'm kind of on a budget here. Um, we do partner with PayPal and you can do 0%. You know, they'll take care of it. And then for the next six months, you don't owe any interest or you don't owe any payments. At the end of six months, you have to start making payments. Obviously, at that point, there's interest. Uh, we have had people that, you know, do it and then they're able to trade and make money from the trading and then just pay it. Obviously, you know, that's not going to work with everyone, but it, it, it does happen. Um, and I always like in trading just to say, like, you know, some... Some people really, really can gravitate into trading and get it. And some people fight the process. And if you fight the process, it's going to be hard. And if you kind of just kind of learn the process and go with it, it's just, you know, it's just like, oh, okay, this isn't that bad. So um, if we look at the, so let's look at this, let's look at this website real quick and can walk you through it real quick. So what you got to do is you click on that. You can click on the link in the lower left. I think that got pushed out to you. Um, you can also just type this in, uh, simplertrading.com forward slash quick tools. And then if you're if you know what you want, just click buy now. You know, boom, boom, boom. Um, if you're not, you know, if you want to double check and make sure what comes with it, um, just scroll down a little bit. And you'll see here's the basic. And again, right now it's 897. Keep in mind that on uh, December 19th ish, uh, the prices will go up. So uh, and then you have the pro version that includes the live trading. That's the one I definitely recommend. If you like the idea of a, of a year long community and you're not part of that, uh, this is a really nice way to participate in that as well. And then remember too, that if you would like to do the Austin mentorship, um, you can add that here too. And that's just a nice virtual. So by virtual, of course, you don't have to fly to Austin. You don't have hotel expense. Um, you know, we're gonna be doing a Texas Hold'em poker night to learn money management. So you won't be able to participate in that, but you will see the lectures and the live trading that we'll be doing and you can do it from the comfort of your own home. Uh, and I think you may, like if you're interested in like in the quick kids and the voodoo lines, you know, you can call us or email us, you know, we've got those on our site. Um, and I certainly recommend that as well. All right, that's what I got. If there's uh, any other questions, I'm happy to answer a couple, but I also wanna respect everybody's time. It's 807 Central. We've been hanging out here for about an hour and seven minutes. Um, all right. So a couple of questions here. Da, da, da. John, will those of us who already have the quick hits be able to do the live trading again? Okay. So good question, Rich. The answer is yes. And be on the lookout for an email. Um, I don't know exactly how it's going to work. I believe that if you uh, potentially, you know, if you're a member of the goal, still a member of the gold room or you renew, um, you get some great deal on that, but just uh, give us a call or an email, but certainly there'll be a way to do that. Are the quant pivots and voodoo lines in the Thinkorswim platform? So they don't come with it, Larry. Those are tools that we created, uh, but you can get them from us, uh, purchase them from us, and then they will go onto the uh, Thinkorswim platform. Uh, Ed, uh, do you day trade the afternoon sessions? Yeah, so I, I think the afternoon sessions that are harder. So uh, the afternoon sessions are either great or horrible. I found the morning sessions are more consistent. In the afternoon, um, you know, the afternoon is either amazing or it's a, it's a fist fight. Uh, today was a good example. So we had on the 3950, 3940 put spreads. And late in the afternoon, we rallied to 3975. We sold those for like three bucks. We were able to buy them back at 75 cents. That was great. And then we had the 3975, 3965s, and they were looking great. But then the market fell like 20 points later in the day. And it's like, ah. So later in the day is tough when it goes against you. So I always say later in the day, be careful. You know, um, there's a saying, you know, people kind of make money in the morning and, and, and give it back at the end of the day. And, uh, I, you know, the end of the day is just different. It's tougher. And in the class, what I talk about is things like, hey, at the end of the day, let's do more asymmetric risk. Like let's do a butterfly. You know, if it doesn't work, we lose a dollar. And if it does work, we make 10, you know, that kind of stuff versus, you know, a widespread. Um, is the new dumb A, dumb A signal finished? Almost. I, I want to do a few more things with it, but we will, for those of you that have it, it's, it's a free, obviously it's a, you know, free add on and we'll just get that uploaded there. Um, ba, 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 ba. Yeah. Uh, you said your son's account was $10,000 and he was aiming for 1% per day. What is your typical percent gain on a normal trading day? So Neil, I, so I kind of, I, I, I kind of push it. And so I typically will go sometimes for two to 3%. Um, but honestly, if you can get 1% is more comfortable, frankly, 1% is easier. You know, you don't have to push it as hard. 
Um, and you know, when you have to push it, sometimes you can, it's easier to make mistakes, but remember 1% a day is 1200% a year. So obviously, you know, three, two percent a day is, is, is fantastic. And so I just, now the thing is, is that there are going to be days when it's like, you have those days where it's like, uh, oh my gosh, you know, this was, uh, you know, a 10% day because the market just killed it, but you can't plan for that. You, you can't wake up and say, I'm going to make 10% today. That's impossible. Um, but there are days where that'll happen. So the key is, though, is to make sure that on days when everything goes against you, that you don't have a bad, bad day. You know, what's the max amount? So so 1% to me is like a good target. And some days you're going to have some great days. There's always that one or two days a month where it's like, oh, that was amazing. And then there's a lot of days where you're like, just don't, you know, don't piss away your chips and, you know, kind of grind it out that way. Um, yeah, okay. Uh, John, are there toss alerts for your rotation tools? Yes. Yeah, so when we first released these tools, we did not have alerts because I thought, you know, alerts will probably drive people crazy, don't have them. And the first thing everybody was like, you need to put alerts on this. So the so the ones that you'll that are now available have alerts. Yes. Um, where do you recommend that you learn spreads quickly with this program? So the good news is. Lorna, if I'm saying this incorrectly, let me know. But I believe that the an Options 101 course comes with the program. So if you're new to spreads, um, that will be in there. And um, the, the spreads aren't, you know, it's interesting. When I first started trading, I hated spreads. But then once I got to know them, I loved them. So there is that little bit of a learning curve to understand them and appreciate them. Um, but they're certainly not, you know, after about an hour or so, you know, you'll have the hang of it, if not sooner. Yeah, good question, Jack. So will the quick hits roll work well with intraday trading, crude oil, gold, ES? Uh, the answer is yes, but I don't know with range bars. So I've never done it with range bars. So that's a good question. Um, with regular candles and bars, yes, I have not done it with range bars. So I just want to be clear on that. But otherwise, I have done that with this, you know, the regular bars. I, it'd be cool to try it with range bars and see how it goes. I would assume it'd be okay with those. Um, ba, 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 ba. Quick question. Does the membership bundle include all the tools that John spoke about? Yes. Yeah, that's that's a great bundle. Okay, so good stuff. And so uh, keep in mind, I see a lot of questions on the quick hits, uh, the quick hits tool, which I do recommend. Um, that is a, a tool that we sell. So just call, you know, if you're doing this and you want to add that on there, just just let them know. And uh, I think that's it. You know, I think there's a lot of great questions here. Uh, we've got so a team here. We'll stay here for a little bit and answer questions. I'm going to leave this up so you can just kind of see all this. And um, again, I just, if you're new to this, I, to me, this is my favorite thing I've discovered or stumbled across since the squeeze. And I've been using the squeeze for 15 years. Uh, someone asked like, well, you're not going to use the squeeze anymore. Oh, no, no. It's, you know, this is the perfect world now. So in trending markets, it's the squeeze, it's the daily charts. And then in between setups, it's this. Uh, even on trend day days, you can still use this. So I, for me, this is the best of both worlds. Um, you know, it's the, it's, the, it's the tool, you know, you complete me. So, so it's really great like that. So anyway, good stuff. Um, you guys have, and gals have a fantastic evening. And then, um, I will, if you're in the gold room, I'm not on the mic tomorrow, but I, I, you know, I'll be looking to post some trades, you know, using this. And then, um, I think that's it. You guys have a fantastic evening for those of you joining with the, joining me or, you know, joining this with the class, you'll, you'll appreciate the recording. And I look forward to doing the live trading with you. Have a good night.